Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Fish Friday number 123 and we have a good one for you today. Today's fish is a really cool fish that I personally loved having in my aquarium. Um, so I do have a little bit of experience with this fish, but not enough to know some specifics. And you'll see why I, what I mean in just a little bit. Today's fish that we're going to be talking about is... Bam! The Banjo Catfish. Now, the Banjo Catfish, the uh, family name is Aspraneidae. Again, that's Aspraneidae. Aspredineidae. Sorry. Aspredineidae. Um, and if you notice, I'm starting with the family because Banjo Catfish is actually a family of fish. There are about 43 species. And there's just a whole bunch of different kinds of banjo catfish. The one I'm specifically going to be talking about is Bunco Bunocephalus coracoides. Coracoides. Again, that's Bunco Bunocephalus coracoides. Man, I could just not do that. And it, I'm pretty. I'm very certain that what I had was Bunocephalus coracoides, but it's hard for me to say exactly when there's 43 species and I can't tell um, exactly the differences between the two or between the 43. Um, so I'm just like hoping. So if I do show a um, picture today, which I'm only showing two, that is not. Um, Bunocephalus, or the other common name for this is Guitarito, Guitarito, Guitarito. Um, a little unclear. I probably said that wrong as well. Um, but that's the other common name of that species. Apparently, it's the common name of other species as well. Um, so it's kind of a little bit of a cluster. Um, but the great thing about it is, is everything I'm telling you about this species is pretty much true for the entire family they all have very similar characteristics um and very similar things so now getting into the fish finally um it is found in the amazon river basin um it occurs in bolivia brazil peru and uruguay those are where you can find these most commonly um they're found in ponds and creeks with slow moving waters with large amounts of plant debris especially leaf litter and that's important especially leaf litter um, as you can see they are a small fish they're kind of brown and blotched um, rough looking it's called the banjo catfish because it has a banjo shape let's be honest when you have this large head really f slim tail going back to this very tiny caudal peduncle it does look like a banjo um, and it's very very flat my goodness look how flat this thing is um, very very flat and it doesn't unlike mo a lot of other catfish it doesn't have an adipose fin which is a fleshy fin right at the back closer to the caudal peduncle banjo catfishes don't have that um, which is a little bizarre um, for me since most of the catfish that I'm familiar with, I understand that there's actually quite a few um, catfish species out there that don't have adipose fins, but a lot of the fish of North America, a lot of the catfish of North America do have adipose fins. So seeing one without is bizarre. It is scaleless, but it does have this weird skin. If you look closely, you can see these warts and ridges. That actually means that their skin is keratinized. It's got all these tubercles. So it's a like a transition. We've talked about the armored catfish before, the whiptails, um, farthawella, things like that. Um, and then, you know, of course, like channel catfish have like none, but the armored catfish have those scoots. This is like a mid, midway. Like it's got the armor, but it's keratin. So, you, you know, fingernails and hair, it's got that sort of protection. Um, but what's actually kind of bizarre about this banjo catfish's skin um, is they actually periodically shed the outer skin like a snake. Like they just like 
the way it goes. Um, I think it's because of the amount of keratin that's actually in there. They have to. So, really weird, bizarre. Um, another interesting mechanism that banjo catfish actually lack, if you've ever dealt with, um, you know, catfish in the past while fishing or something, you know they can lock their dorsal spine, the spine on the back. Um, banjo catfish um, actually lack that mechanism. Well, most species do, and I'm pretty sure this species does as well. I'm not 100% sure, but I am pretty sure this uh, species does not have that lock, um, that mechanism that locks that dorsal spine in place. Um, I, they do have it on their... Excuse me, new dad life. Um, they do have it on their pectoral fins. Um, so, and it does have these barbels. You can see it's got the whiskers, um, the fleshy, um, the fleshy appendages that allow them to sense in the dark. Um, it is a benthic fish, and we've talked about this before. When you see a fish that's this flat. Um, I'm racking my brain and I don't know if I've ever seen a fish that's been this dorsal laterally compressed that's swimming up in the water column. They are a benthic fish. Um, when you have something this flat, usually they are a benthic uh, fish living on the benthos or the very bottom, basically. Um, and they're a very sluggish fish. They're not quick movers. They're kind of just moving around. Um, and it, you, us as people, pro will not see these very well because they are extremely nocturnal. Um, and during the day, they're buried down in the leaf litter or the sand. Um, so they're com they're completely nocturnal. They'll go down and they'll bury themselves in this leaf litter and sand and just you know that's where they spend their day and they only come out at night to feed they are omnivorous they're eating you know little worms uh, organic debris and things like that um, but they're nocturnal and they're not moving around fast so get to there well you know there's just not a lot going on for this thing it's just sleeping and then gets up to eat um, very sluggishly but it does actually have two ways of swimming um, which I thought was pretty cool. They swim in the normal way through undulation, you know, moving their tail fin back and forth, but they can also swim by propelling themselves forward by pumping water through their gill openings. That causes them to sort of skip along the substrate. Um, that, that was just extremely weird. It couldn't, I couldn't fathom how that was more energy efficient than just swimming but apparently there's a reason for it um, now they're very very cryptic it's really hard to see these they're leaving the, these species are li living in heavy tannin rich waters with lots of leaf litter they're out only at night where it's already dark um, so do not be scared if you get these and you can't find them. Like if you put one of these in your aquarium, chances are they're buried and they'll only come out at night um, unless you do something that is truly bizarre, um, for me anyway. Like I believe all species of the um, banjo catfish or the Asperineidids, um, they don't have like some of the alarm cells in their brain and it's hard for me to like kind of describe that because I don't understand it but they don't have like sort of alarm cells so they don't have a fright reaction that's present in other fish it takes them a long time to like get that fright reaction to get scared they don't have immediate uh, protection and that's actually very good for them because that allows them to like stay calm in those situations, not move because they are relying on their cryptic coloration. And in fact, they're so 
um, they don't have that alarm cells, but if you do have these in the aquarium, and I thought this was going to be an interesting fact, but it's not, but it's still incredibly interesting. I loved, I had three banjo catfish in my large aquarium when I used to have one. I loved the banjo catfish because what I would do is I would put my hand in and, you know, obviously I washed my hands and then got all the soap off and then I dipped it in the water and just kind of let it sit. So like I'm doing it as safely as someone should and I probably shouldn't have even done it as much, much as I did. But I love sticking my hand down and if you have one of these, you can too. If you know where they are, you can stick your hand down and find the banjo catfish and pick it up during the day. It, that's how much it doesn't react for doing that and how much it relies on cryptic coloration and staying still. And what's really neat is if you pick it up and you drop it, it still doesn't swim. It kind of wobbles. And that's why it's really important for them to have a lot of this leaf litter and vegetation. They look like an actual leaf that is falling through the water that's gotten heavily heavily soaked and is actually soaking uh moving on down to the bottom they look exactly like that and then when they hit the bottom they'll stay there for about three seconds and then they'll bury themselves like super quick so they they're just floating floating hit the bottom it's like okay i think i'm safe bury back to sleep um it's really really cool and they're actually a very good starter aquarium fish. Um, you can buy these for about $7. Um, depending on the species, they're either very good in the community aquariums or you need to kind of keep them alone because some of these banjo catfish are actually um, pretty carnivorous um, if given an opportunity, meaning they'll eat your smaller fish. Um, but now for the interesting fact that we're gonna end the video on, I thought was going to be me you know being able to pick them up but during my research i found a video that i will now share at least part of it with you i got a naked body i got a flattened head look like a banjo but i'm a fish instead I'm a banjo catfish. I'm a banjo catfish. I'm a banjo catfish. Down in the river mud. I hide in the day. It's what I need. <laughs> when it's dark outside, I come out to feed. I'm a banjo catfish. I'm a banjo catfish. I'm a banjo catfish. Down in the river mud. Okay, so if you want to go um, to this video, um, see this video, just basically look up Banjo Catfish song. I thought it was incredible. Um, the story behind it is <clears throat> um, this apparently, this channel was created to help kids with their vocabularies and make it fun and interesting and the fact that this you know banjo catfish is not one of the most like well-known fish and just the fact that this exists out there is to me was <laughs> very interesting and how can you not love that tune right there um so thank you so much and this you know credit to this video definitely goes to big world club um but thank you guys so much again. I really appreciate it. Hope to see you again. If I don't, please be safe. Have a great day. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you do. I'd really appreciate it. Hope to see you again. Um, love the comments. Um, and I hope if I I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving since the next fish Friday will not be until after Thanksgiving. But thank you guys so much again. Take care of yourselves, take care of your loved ones, and peace. I need to hit over here. <laughs>